Well, Riley, what, uh, just tell us about your decision to come back and why, why you felt that was best for you. Yeah, so after the bowl game, um, kind of like DJ said, I just took a, a week or two to compress and, and think about uh, all the goals that I have in mind and what the best next step to complete those goals is. And I, I kind of talked with my family in close circle and prayed on it a lot. And um, just kind of at the end of the day, realized that Boise's, play, Boise's the place to be. And um, you all know Boise as a city is hard to leave. And uh, just the family that's growing here and continue to grow here, I just wanted to be a part of it. And I'm excited to just come back for a sixth year. And it's just a blessing to be able to have that opportunity. And I'm excited to get to work and give the city a championship on, on the way out. So. What are those goals that brought you back? Um, just to finish my MBA was a big one. Just uh, like DJ said, kind of having a purpose with school and coming back, finishing that and uh, winning a championship. It was, it was tough losing on the blue last year. And it's uh, been a sick feeling for that whole month off. And, um, my goal is to come back, win another championship, and, and be another leader on this team, possibly a captain, and just trying to uh, lead this team to a championship and doing whatever I can to continue to grow as a player and a leader to help us to get to our goal. Did you have any talks with uh, Bush Hamden about you know, what his offense will look like and how he might use you? Yeah, we talked a lot when um, he originally came in, and um, he kind of showed me a bunch of stuff that he did at Washington, which they had a lot of successful tight ends. and same at Missouri and uh, broke it down and he's just an awesome guy uh, like besides football he's just a great guy and I'm, I'm excited to get to work with him. I know you're a team guy but do you want to be used more? Absolutely you know I I want to be able to play to my potential and do everything I can for the team and um, if that's to get more balls then absolutely I would love to do that but whatever it is whatever shape form it comes in I'm just trying to help the team no matter how I can so. You mentioned, you know, you like Boise a lot. Like, when you're going through the decision, do you have to, like, make a pros and cons of, like, all right, do I start my life or, like, why the hell would I leave college? Like, this is awesome. Right, absolutely. I made a big pros and cons with the different factors and decisions that I could have made coming out of here. And, um, yeah, the city was a big one. And being able to be in college another year and, and finish my MBA was a huge thing for me. And uh, like I said, it's, Boise is just a hard place to leave. Yeah. Um, like snowy days like this, I'm a Florida boy. So if I go back to the, the East Coast, I'm not going to be able to see a lot of this. So this is, this is awesome. Is it pretty crazy like how long you've been here and just thinking about how, how <laughs> you're still in college this, this amount of time? Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, the days are long, but the years flew by. And uh, like I said, it's just a, a blessing to be here for another year. And it is crazy being an old man. Like uh, uh, Dimitri said, grandpa on his coming back thing. That's exactly how I feel. I feel old, man. I'm but it's good. I'm assuming it wasn't the priority, but you're one of the few guys on this team that are really good at NIL. What role did that play in you coming back? Um, not as big of a role, but I just know uh, the direction that Mike Walsh has taken everything in. And um, when I came back, I knew that was going to be a, a positive factor, but it didn't play a massive role into it. It was mostly about what team I wanted to be a part of. And, um, but it's definitely going to shoot off in a great direction. I'm excited to see where it goes. You look at some of the guys that are coming back, it would be you, know, you or DJ. Um, how much does you know the program need guys like you? I mean, you guys are kind of the guys you always hear that, that do things the right way. So, in terms of being a model for the younger guys, yeah, I mean it's been a standard ever since I was a freshman. You see all the older guys, and they continue to pass it down. And so, uh, guys like Dimitri and DJ, like we're we're all trying to continue that standard. And and it started way back with uh, older guys, back with Kellen Moore and stuff. And uh, that's continuing to build and just push down through the program. So it's, it's a blessing to be able to be a part of that and try to set the right standard for the, for the younger guys that are going to carry it on for the future. DJ said something that uh, Spencer kept texting him to see what he was going to do. Yeah. Uh, did, did you have any fluid communication with anybody as you kind of weighed your decision when you were back home? Yeah, I definitely talked to Potter a lot and, and Bush, but it was during the holidays, so I, I didn't want to bug them too much, and they didn't want to bug me. But uh, uh, those type of guys, we kind of um, – just came together and had some, some great conversations and uh, got deep with each other and just kind of thought about those goals and what I wanted to do in the future and what their uh, vision was, and we kind of got on the same page. So I don't know if it was part of the decision or not, but you look at what you bring back on offense and the potential of this offense next year. I mean, how exciting is that, and, and, and what's the, the ceiling, I guess, for this offensive unit? Oh, it's going to be amazing. we got a lot of young guys like TG and Ashton, and um, it's just exciting. I mean, just the culture is – 
is continuing to build. And like I said, that family aspect is different. And I wanted to be a part of that one more year. And we know that when we take the field, it's everyone's going to be blocking for each other and, and pouring their heart out, leaving it all in the field because we're a family. And that's just going to create an explosive offense with the talent that we already have. You said you wanted to be a leader. And you're going to be a leader of this team, mm -hmm. DJ, as well. DJ said he's more of the silent type of leader. What type of leader are you? I'm kind of in between. I'm not like a big rah-rah guy, but I'll definitely uh, voice my opinion and um, hold people accountable. And um, when people like DJ speak, you know it's important and uh, everyone listens. And so what I try to do is I just try to set a good example so that when I do speak and when I do hold people accountable, then uh, people will listen. And it's the same way. Like when a younger guy tells me I'm not doing something right, I'm going to listen. So. Uh, leadership goes both ways and so I'm just going to continue to try to uphold that standard and uh, be more vocal is kind of what I'm growing to, to do but I'm not a big rah-rah guy unless I have to be but uh, yeah I'm just trying to grow as a leader every day and, and do the right thing to show them how to go. What was your reaction when you heard George Milani was coming back? I was excited man I was talking to him the whole time during that offseason too um, we were kind of bouncing ideas off each other and um, a lot of the six-year guys were, we were all like, are you coming back? Are you coming back? Because that, that played a big part. I mean, we've been together since freshman year. And um, talking to George and him coming back, that was super exciting for me. And I'm just glad to work with him, not only as a football player, but just being his life as a, a friend another year is going to be great. Especially with Ashton and, and TG back there as well. I mean, what does he add to this office? What does he add to this team? Yeah, it's like that explosive component. I mean, they extend plays, and it's crazy. Like you got to keep your head on a swivel. The play's never over until the whistle blows because they're going to make something happen. And um, it's just, it's just going to be really cool to see the explosiveness that our offense is going to continue to build on coming into this next season. When you look at a lot of the people that would enter the transfer portal at other schools, why do you think so many people that were mainstays on this team all decided to stay? I think it's just the culture, man. It's, it's different here. Like, everybody that comes in, you could, you could say that, but, like, you really feel it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the family aspect, too. Like, these are the guys that – we played with for a long time and we can we believe in the in the vision and it's just going to be exciting to see where it goes and it's 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 hard to leave when you have something that's so amazing like like Boise State obviously Ty Neal left and and Kurt's gone um, what are your impressions of of some of the uh the younger tight ends um Jack and then the the freshman coming in I'm not sure if you met or talked to any of those dudes yeah no it's going to be great like Matt Lauder is continuing to grow every single day and not just on the physical side but the mental side we sit down we have a lot of conversations and try to grow our football IQ together and he's made huge strides especially in this last year and then all the younger guys like Luke Voorhees Austin Terry Jack um, freshman Caden Dawson's here and so we're just excited to continue to to grow because we're going to need depth I mean we got a lot of young guys and it's going to start with Coach Potter, going to start with me on trying to train those guys because we know they're going to be important throughout this whole season. So it's going to be super exciting to see um, the strides that they make during this offseason. Rev, you brought up, you know, you, you and the other six-year seniors maybe had some communication together. How, how did that play out? I mean, you guys got a group text, like you just calling each other? Like, how, how did that... How'd you guys keep up on each other? Yeah, it was definitely calling each other. I mean, we were mostly just checking in to see how we were doing. It's hard to be away from the guys for even a month when we're with each other every single day. But yeah, we were just checking in to see where each other's heads were at and um, weigh out the pros and cons of our different talks. Because like I said, like when we go home, we talk with our family and we talk with our inner circle. And a lot of the inner circle and trust is built with those guys that are coming back those six years because they're our brothers for life. So a lot of those conversations were with them. and. Um, they were respective of whatever they wanted to do. So being able to talk to them and bounce ideas off each other, we were definitely fired up for everyone to come back. As you usually get a little bit older, you understand how to uh, <clears throat> kind of pace things, for, you know, so you can stay healthy and all that stuff. But you look at like Taylor on you know social media and stuff, and he's already like out throwing with guys and all that stuff. What, what does that young energy maybe do for you guys and like, you know those guys that got a taste of it and like almost just want to get right back in it seems right no it's great it's it's always um a mentality here to continue to grow every single day and for Taylor, i know he's in the pass game in the run game whatever he can do to get an um an edge on somebody else he's always going to do it and there's guys on this team that right coming off that um, win in the bowl game, they're right back to work and they're already focused on spring ball and how we can get better and how we can think about the championship and what we can do to grow as a player for that aspect. So there's a lot of guys on that team that, that does that. So it's going to be fun seeing how our whole team grows and how we compete and we can go out and win a championship.
you guys see yourself like living in Boise when you're, you know, for the rest of your life or when you're done playing, or are you going to move back to Florida or what? I don't know. I mean, I'm a beach boy at heart, but like I said, Boise is definitely hard to leave. Um, but if I don't live here, I'd definitely be visiting a lot. So not sure yet, but yeah, Boise is a great spot, no doubt. We'll ask yeah. you that again.